good morning. I hope everyone here enjoyed the, the hot Saturday we had just yesterday. I mean, that was, that was nice. It was nice to see kids out running around. Who here went out in shorts? Okay, I know I'm strange, but it was definitely hot yesterday. But with that, just a few announcements for us this morning. If you have heard, for Zion, there is no school on Monday. There's no school on Friday, and there's an early out this Wednesday for the kids. So if any of the kids here, that you are excited as can be, because I know you guys all enjoy that very much. Also, our voters meeting, it will be taking place this Monday night, right after service. So please go ahead and join us at the voters meeting and have questions ready for us if needed. Also, today we are collecting mites for the LWML mic box today. So I'm sure if you've seen it in the back, if you want to, if you're so moved, please go ahead and put some offering in there for their mic box as well. And also this week, we have the LWML groups meeting, Catherine's group meeting at 1.30, and the Agape group meeting at 7 p.m. that evening. And we also have our Lutheran Layman's League meeting Thursday at 7. So LWML will be meeting, Catholic group will be meeting at 1.30 Wednesday, Agape group at 7 that Thursday, that Wednesday, and our Lutheran Layman's League will be meeting this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Also, because we do have early out, that can cause a little confusion, but we will still be having confirmation and faith weavers still taking place at their regular scheduled time this week. Also, as you know, we are now moving forward with a few things. So if you look inside your, your pew in front of you, you'll see these attendance cards. Please go ahead and fill these out and put these in the offering baskets as they will be passed this service today. You don't have to hand them to each other, just put them in the basket as they are passed along to collect the offering. But with that, let's begin with our opening song, Waymaker. The word epiphany means the showing forth or revelation. One of the images associated with our Lord in this season of epiphany is that he is the bright morning star. In John's Gospel, Jesus is quoted as calling out, I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. In the season of epiphany, we see the brightness of God in the face of our Lord, but we are called to follow him just as the original disciples were called centuries ago. For all who follow the Lord in humble faith, the future is bright.
we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now make our confession to our merciful Father in heaven. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we admit and confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought and in word and in deed. We confess that we have not lived lives that are holy and have not shaped all our actions so that they are in accord with our commands. We confess that your love has not reached others through us in every situation. We confess that we have not always been defenders of the weak and helpless. We confess that we have not used every opportunity given to us, witness to the faith that is ours, and have let the devil of the world and our sinful flesh set the agendas for our lives and actions. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, keep your family and the church continually in the true faith that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Our Old Testament reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook, and the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Our, from our epistle reading is 1 Corinthians, from chapter 14, beginning at verse 12. So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks to your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say, Amen, to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I'd rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking, be mature. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he, asked, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked me to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. When they have brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Let us come together and confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, I died and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into hell and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. 
we invite the children to come forward to hear the children's message. Help us to do that by sharing with them your 
love, how you died on the cross, and how you rose again on the third day, and how you have taken away all our sins and brought us the gift of eternal life. And help us, Lord, to invite and encourage others also to come with us and to be with us here in your house each week. And also, maybe to come to Sunday school or to Vacation Bible School or to Faith Weavers, which are all opportunities for each of us to grow in our faith and love for you. Help us, Lord, to help uh, to catch people for you so that they may grow in their faith and their love for you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys.
Well, our text today is certainly a familiar one. It's basically a, a fishing story. And uh, I think every one of us here has probably had experience at one time or another fishing. Uh, some of those stories, I'm sure, uh, we like to relate to and share. Uh, other stories, maybe we'd be better off just kind of forgetting or putting aside. I know in my own experience, uh, I can recall fishing off the shore in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Four foot swells, boom, boom, boom. It was almost torture. That was a fishing story I just as soon forget, even though I just shared it with you. Another story for myself goes back to the days when I was a vicar in southern Illinois. And a compromise, and he knew that I liked to fish. He said, Vicar, would you come out to my house to fish? I said, sure, Jason, I'd be glad to. So we set up a time, grabbed the tackle box, flat, grabbed the fishing pole, and he had a farm pond back at his house. So I'm thinking, you know, I brought some night crawlers and stuff like that, and I thought I was all set up. But before we went out to the pond, he said, just a second, we went out to a shed, he had a coffee can, and he got what looked to me looked like uh, dog food. It wasn't dog food. It was fish food. Went up to the pond, he grabbed a big handful of this, he threw it out in the water. All of a sudden, the waters began to boil with catfish. And then Jason, the little kid, says, Cast your line out there, Ricker. <laughs> Needless to say, we had plenty of fish on that Lord's day. Now, in our gospel lesson today, we have Jesus with Peter, James, and John, fishermen by the sea at Gennesaret. And we're told that uh, these fishermen had been up all night and had caught absolutely nothing. Now, for uh, a recreational fisherman, that's no big deal. We've all had disappointing days, especially if you like to fish. Some days the fish are biting, some days they just aren't there. Apparently that was the kind of night that Peter, James, and John had had. No fish. But Jesus was there not to fish, at least initially. He was there talking to the people. Now you have to understand a little bit about the culture in those days. In our day and time, when you talk to somebody, we have a sense of uh, what we want to call personal space, okay? Usually a couple feet between you and the person. You usually don't want somebody right in your face. And uh, with COVID, it's supposed to be six feet even, right? Well, in the Middle East, they don't have a, they don't have a sense of that personal space. In fact, in the Middle East, this is kind of the custom, the culture that when you talk to somebody, they were right there. Even to the point that you would actually smell their breath, as pleasant as that sounds, it's true. It was a cultural thing. So here Jesus is teaching, there's this great multitude of people, and what's going on? They're all pressing in on him, very, very close. And of course, they didn't have a public address system. So you can imagine how our Lord's words were getting lost in all of this uh, soft tissue, if you will. People's faces, their clothing, and so forth. It was a really frustrating situation in terms of being able to speak publicly and <laughs> communicate effectively. So what did Jesus do? He tells Peter, he gets into the boat and has him put out a little ways from shore. And if you can imagine, you're a pulpit, you know, it's kind of like a boat, all right? Jesus is out, out a ways a little bit, but everybody can hear him. And you can imagine kind of a bay-type situation, stadium seating, I suppose, as a shore went up and so forth. But that made a much better situation for people to hear the important message that Jesus had came to proclaim that day. And it sounds like it was a casual atmosphere. Uh, Jesus actually sat down in the boat and began to teach. He shared with these peoples God's word. 
How long that went on, we don't know exactly. But uh, after the lesson, or the message, or even the sermon, if you will, was over, what does uh, Peter or Jesus tell Peter to do? He says, put out into the water and let your nets down for a catch. And I think Peter, for some reason, just from other indications in the scripture, but especially our text today, was kind of a cynical individual. He's like, Come on, Lord. We've been out all night. We didn't catch anything. Translation, you really think we should waste our time doing this? The fish just aren't there. So, but what does Peter say? He says, the Lord says, you told me. We'll do it. And here's the first important point. It's always important to listen and to follow the instructions that Jesus gives us. Always, Jesus speaks to us through his word. It's important for us to hear, and not only hear, but to do. Because what happens? They put out in the water. They throw their nets overboard. Remember, they hadn't caught any fish in the last eight or ten hours. However long they were up all night, I imagine they were just absolutely exhausted. What happens? The nets are so full that the boats begin to sink. They call to their friends, hey, come help us. And both of these boats are just overladen with fish. Why? Because they listen to Jesus. Now, am I telling you that every time you do something that Jesus asks you or tells you to do in the scripture that you're going to be blessed with abundance of fish or whatever? Those of you that are fishermen, I'm sure you spent more of your share of time praying in a boat. Does that mean it's going to be a great day? Not necessarily. But here's the thing. When we do what Jesus calls us to do, when we do what Jesus instructs us to do, we are always blessed. But sometimes that blessing is immediate, and sometimes happens later. Sometimes it is a physical blessing and more often than not it's a spiritual blessing as well. But nonetheless, when we listen and follow the words of Jesus, when we follow his instruction, we are always blessed. But look at Peter's reaction to this blessing. He isn't jumping up and down about the fish. I'm sure he was overwhelmed and very grateful to God. But he realizes, okay, Rabbi, there's something else going on here. There's something more going on here. Peter had a deep sense that in Jesus Christ, the Holy God is present. That this is God's own Son. This is the Messiah. This is the Savior. And what is Peter's first reaction? He says, depart from me, for I am a, say it, sin, sinful man, a sinner. That's exactly right. What about us? What about us when we go to the Lord in prayer? Do we have this sense of sinfulness about ourselves? What about when we come and sit down here and worship and as we pray before the beginning of the service? Or as we confess our sin? the words of the general confession and receive that assurance of forgiveness. We, like Peter, need to have that sense that we are that sinful. Not that we want Jesus to go away as Peter did, but have a sense of that sinfulness, knowing that that is exactly why Jesus came. That he came to be our Savior. That he came to bring us forgiveness and life in Him. And that by faith and trust in Him, our sins, whatever they may be, sins of thought, word of deed, and omission, commission, no mission, as we acknowledge those sins, that as far as the east is from the west, those sins have been removed forever. And we have life in the Savior each and every day because of what Christ has done. And then what does Jesus say to Peter? He says, follow me. 
and I will teach you to catch them. And that's exactly what Jesus has done for us. We are all catches. We are all fishers of men. You don't need to be a pastor or a vicar or an elder. You know, in nine out of ten cases, people that come and join the church, do you know why? It's not because the pastor came to visit them, although that certainly has an impact. I know and I know it's important. But it's because someone like you folks here invited them and shared. Study after study indicates that actually it's the way people you know, professional shepherds, if you will, people expect us to know our stuff, to be able to come and witness and share the good news. But for whatever reason, it's lay people like you that are the most effective in helping the body of Christ grow. And that's exactly what we see in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, Jesus had followers. People came from near and from far to hear him proclaim. But who did he call? He called 12 ordinary people, 12 ordinary men, fishermen, tax collectors. The list goes on and on. People from everyday life. And it was those 12 men that not only gave us the scriptures, but changed the world. You know as I know that we live in some times. We're facing stresses and anxieties. Things are being called into question that have never been questioned before in our lifetime. Where do we stand? What is the message we are going to share as God gives us that opportunity? As followers of the Lord Jesus, we are called to catch people for our Lord. To be witnesses of His love, His forgiveness, His peace. And there's nothing more gratifying than seeing the Lord work in the life of others see their faith grow in faith and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as much as that is gratifying and feels good to be a part of that as we have the opportunity to reach out to others and share the comfort of the gospel even in the midst of the sorrow and the sadness that we have experienced in our own community or sorrow and sadness we see often in our world. We remember this. That success belongs to the Lord. As it was the shepherd, our Lord Jesus, who sent us in the first place. It is the Lord Jesus who equipped us by the power of his Holy Spirit to share the good news. May God bless us and keep us that we may be found faithful. That we may share this good news with all that we know. Continue to grow in his love and his forgiveness and peace. And in a world darkened by sin, be a bright light of the Savior's love and forgiveness and peace. His name. Amen. <clears throat> now may the peace of God be with you always, that you may grow in your faith and your love for your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and share that good news as God gives you the opportunity that the world may know the Savior and His love, His forgiveness, and His peace. In His name we ask it. Amen. Please. Thank you.
to hold people accountable. Lord, we give you thanks to stay gather in your house to hear your word read and proclaimed to us. Lord, you went out seeking 12 regular men to share your word, and they did. You turned instead of fishermen into fishers of men. Lord, help us to stay and always to be fishers of men in our community, to our friends, and our family. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we pray for those who are currently now in the hospital. We pray for Sue Brogdon, who is now in hospice care. Lord, grant her family peace and comfort during this time. And the doctors are taking great care of Sue. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for Shane Clausen, close friend of Andy White, who is waiting important test results uh, this Thursday. Take care of him and his family and his friends as they await the news. And may the doctors be ready to move with the right care based upon those results. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those who continue to battle illnesses and recover from past illnesses and surgeries. For Danny Anderson, Monty Zerke, Laverne Schultz, Sandy Buckendall, Shauna Gossman, Anna Heron, 13 year old friend of Julie Farr, whose brain tumors worsened, is now back in Rochester. For Ted Weinrich, Terry Altwine, Jolene Buss, Gretchen Trinkline, Sherry Stanacha, and Dave Meinke. Lord, be with these folks, grant them healing and recovery. May they continue about their days. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we come to you with troubled hearts, especially this day for Bridget and Scott Lambert and their family of the passing of Bridget's father, Gary White. Grant some peace and comfort in this tough time. Lord, also grant comfort and peace for Leroy and Teresa Clausen as the services for their children will be held this Monday for Alex, Candace, and Andrew at their church, Northern Heights Baptist. Grant some peace and comfort for this time. May they always look towards you. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we give you thanks for the work that is being done in your name. Today we especially pray for Herman and Sheila Streitzer as they live and serve you in the Czech Republic and the Eurasia region. We pray that you continue to give them strength and patience as they continue to transition to life overseas as they learn the culture, the language. And may your Holy Spirit strengthen them to boldly share your word and their interactions with other LCMS missionaries who serve in this region, along with the local church partners and those in the community in which they live and work. Lord, we give you thanks that the Shreiks are serving these children in this part of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for our first responders, our firefighters, our police, and our military. There is some peace and comfort and courage as they continue about their job. May they always look towards you for strength at all times and all places. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we give you thanks for this wonderful weather that we have had. And we will give you thanks for the days to come. And in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Please rise. As we pray the prayer of our Lord Himself, His Thomas. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
tell the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.